Good morning guys, welcome to a very cold Shinjuku. Today's a big one. We got a heap of sightseeing to do, we got a few errands to run, and we're gonna eat a heap of food. Come join us, let's go. Coffee for me. I'm gonna get a Starbucks this morning. I've just seen a new Christmas one that they brought out, so I think I've got to try that. So come on in with me. I got a butter caramel malay filet. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but look at it. it smells super sweet. It's got some crunchy bits on top, bit of cream that's melted now. So I think it's got like little bits of biscuit and like little bits of puff pastry or something that's been like extra toasted. And then we saw him do a drizzle of caramel as well. Delicious, very, very sweet but I like my sweet stuff, so definitely a winner. Okay, so now Brookie's done with her dessert, coffee. Um, we've come across the road to grab a real coffee. We come over to Blue Bottle, and to get the day started right, I grabbed a little macchiato. Yeah, perfect. A little love heart. How cute. So that's my pre-coffee coffee. And then my actual coffee is, I got a single origin drip coffee with their winter blend, or their holiday blend, sorry. Ooh, wow, that's really flavorsome. It tastes nothing like black coffee. It's like quite a fruity flavor to it. Brookie, you might actually really like that. Give that a go. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy these and then we've got a little bit of shopping to do, so we'll just catch you guys in a minute. So we've had a few people ask us about what it's like travelling with a baby, how we access nursing rooms, change our baby's nappy, things like that. So we do have a whole video coming just purely on traveling with a baby and what it's like in Japan. Keynote as well, just to remember, in winter, they turn the heaters up like wild in shopping centers, trains, anywhere inside you go. So make sure you're layering your baby and yourselves because it can get really, really hot and you've just got to kind of strip off each layer as you go inside, outside, things like that. So we're stopping for a mid-morning snack at Belange. Not Luke Lobsters, we have tried them before in Harajuku, so we'll link that video so you can watch what we eat there. But let's go in and check out what we should get. whatsoever and it was really really busy so we didn't want to be in there trying to translate things we kind of just went off what it looked like and what we might like again no idea something cheesy in a croissant looks good it does look quite good let's give that a go hey no idea tasty i want to say it's almost pasta oh really like a bolognese. I think so. Bolognese and cheese, croissant. Oh, there's actually noodles in there. Mm. Holy, there is pasta mm. in a croissant. Is that good? The actual croissant is beautiful. So buttery. All right, so it's got noodles, beef mints, and bechamel sauce on it. Oh, 
<laughs> That's wild. So the second thing we got looks amazing. I thought this was a bit of like a cheesy tomato sort of sauce on it. And it looked like, to me, from the packet, it looked like a sort of a ham, you know, baguette or something like that. That's what I was hoping for. But from first smell, I think that might be salmon roe on top and inside. Looks a bit sad. Yeah, it looks like there's more salmon roe and some seaweed, maybe? I don't know. Let's give it a go. I still have absolutely no idea what it is. It doesn't look great. It's a bit fishy tasting, so I'm assuming it's some type of fish egg through it. It's actually, it's not bad. It's quite nice if you're not into, like, if you don't mind a little bit of, like, fishy stuff. It's pretty good. The bread is exceptional, though. It's like a nice, you know, a sourdough baguette. It's beautiful. Let me have one more bite. All right, so on to the next. Let's go this bad boy. Ooh. Yum! It's like a buckle of a sandwich. Ooh, uh oh, don't drop any. Oh no. Whoa! Yum! That looks incredible. What Brooke said it was, I think that's exactly what it is. This is trying to be a baklava. So it's like a sugar glazed um, pastry mm -hmm. with a pistachio cream or a white chocolate through it, which is amazing. And then the edges are coated in pistachio crumbs. This is about everything you want from a sweet pastry. Mm. The pastry, you can tell, has a lot of sugar keeping it together. It almost has like that like as if it's got heaps of heaps of honey in it and it kind of cracks. The cream isn't overly sweet. It has that really nice pistachio flavor. Delicious. Really, really good. Mm. Would you get it again? Mm. God, yeah. We're coming back here to get it again. So we committed to lunch back in the hotel today so Mia could have a rest before we've got a big afternoon of sightseeing. So we just went to Family Mart, yep. I think we ended up at, and just got a little bit of a picky kind of lunch. So I got curry cup noodle, a big, big one. I grabbed a, I haven't had one of these since we've been in Japan. They're, it's a ramen, a miso ramen in a box. Or in a packet, in a bowl, whatever that is. <laughs> so this one needs to be microwave, so we ended up just microwaving at home. It looks pretty good, I am not gonna lie. Ooh. So you pop the lid, and it's got... Oh, that's so cool. Actually, that's so cool. So, soup's in the bottom of this bowl, and the noodles are sitting on top of it, but this plastic is sitting on top of the soup and below the in noodles. In between them both. Yeah, so ready, if I pull this out, the noodles will drop down into the soup. The noodles drop <gasps> wow. down into the soup. So they don't go soggy. Wow, Japan, you think of everything. The lady that was working at Family Mart must have thought we were very Australian because um, she didn't even offer us chopsticks. She just gave us forks. They seem quite firm, so we'll give that a go. I'll give this a sip. I'm gonna have some chicken while I wait. Mm -hmm. That's a really flavoursome broth for a, for like an, like not an instant, but whatever that is, like a store-bought ramen. It's a really flavoursome broth. It has a weird smell to it, but it's, it's delicious. The, it's the miso, the fermented bean. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Nice, bouncy noodle. I love that. Really nice and firm. There's a big... Well, not a big piece, but there is a piece of pork on this as well. Big fan of that. That's actually a pretty good bowl of ramen for the convenience. And it was only a couple of hundred yen as well. Super cheap. I think that's better than some like cup ones that you get. Oh, way better than the cup. If you go to a Family Mart, 7-Eleven or Lawson, and they have these like pre-made ramens, get that over a cup noodle. Way better. How's your chicken? Yeah, I didn't like it. No? I don't think it reheated very well. So this is spicy, sweet, 
Korean fried chicken. Have we tried this? Mm hmm. I can't remember. Oh, I um. It's like a whole piece of chicken thigh. Like a whole chicken thigh cup. I love me the curry cup noodles. It's got potato in it, it's got meat in it. Yum, so good. <clears throat> I'm not really, I haven't got my Japanese slurp down yet. I still have to bite the noodle off. I'm not. You gotta get that. <laughs> yeah, it just, it scares me that I'm gonna choke. All right, we're gonna go finish this and just have a little relax time while Mia's down for her nap. And then we've got a fun afternoon slash night of potential Christmas lights. Mm. Make sure you leave a comment down below and let us know whether, who does the best ramen like this? Mm. Is it Lawson Family Mart or 7-Eleven? I'm not sure. I know we've got some, we've um, acquired some new Japanese subscribers over the last couple of weeks um, since being here. Getting a lot of comments in Japanese that I'm having to Google Translate, which is cool. Super exciting to see. But those Japanese people watching, let me know what is the best. Is it 7-Eleven, is it Family Mart, or is it Lawson? Because this is quite good, and this is a Family Mart one. And if the other ones are great, I want to give them a go too. Two hours later. So we are all refreshed and relaxed, and we have come to Rapongi to see some Christmas lights. And there's a skating rink. But we can't go because we've got a baby, so we're watching from afar tonight. It's good entertainment, could sit there and watch it for hours. Anyway, let's go suss out these Christmas lights. Come with us, we'll show you along. They've got different kind of live shows happening. I think they had some type of Coca-Cola type of promo and then heaps of beautiful starry trees. Yeah, it's really stunning. A lot of people though, uh, we're here on the 3rd of December. Uh, so it's just kicked off at the start of December. And I think it runs goes till midnight every night for the month of December. So definitely worthwhile having a look. Obviously we're here a bit earlier because of somebody. We're gonna go and find some dinner now mm. before Mia has to go down and then potentially some more Christmas lights. Potentially more Christmas lights, but dinner first. Let's go eat. I'm hungry. Oh. So as traveling with a baby has shown us, plans can change very quickly. And on our way to go get something to eat, Mia decided that she was hungry and that she needed to go to sleep ASAP. So we quickly went and dealt with that, which means instead of dinner, we've actually come more Christmas light looking now. So we are just behind Rapongi Hills Shopping Center. There's a street just down the back that is lined with trees and lights. And if you get the right angle, right down the end, you can have a nice view of Tokyo Tower as well. 
we'll make sure we link all the places we've gone to today in the description so if you're here during December or even late November you can actually catch these locations too because to be honest they're pretty stunning it's so nice it's full of people but it's good everyone's trying to cross this crossing to get in the middle and take a photo of the tower and the trees as you so, can see now because in the middle of the road, you get a perfect lined up street with Tokyo Tower down the end, all illuminated, looking real pretty. There's actually a couple of policemen on the crossing with megaphones yelling at people that are taking too long. And trust me, the taxis will let you know if you're holding them up. So really cool to come check out. One of those things like where we're not very spoiled like this back home, especially on the Gold Coast. No one really, like, the city doesn't go all out with Christmas lights like Tokyo seems to. This is a very small handful of locations that do the Chrissy lights. But throughout Tokyo, there is a heap more locations. So we'll make sure we link all the ones we didn't even make it to that we've done some research and found out all down below in the description. Anyway, we'll show you what we get for dinner because I am starving. And I know that's what you guys are really here for, the food. But the Christmas lights are nice too. Also just up the escalator from the all the Christmas lights, there is a Rapongi Hills Christmas market. I must say though, proceed with caution. There is only, it's a lot of people and there's only about four or five food stalls there and a gift shop. So for a hot dog, there's a lineup of about 60 people. So seems a bit excessive just for some Christmas food and a little Christmas market. I don't know. If you're here earlier, maybe we're a bit later on in the night. It is a Saturday night at eight o'clock, so it is pretty jam-packed in there. Maybe if you're here earlier, maybe during the week or something, it might be a lot quieter and worth a look. Something to think about. All right, guys, tonight's dinner is Shake Shack. We are very excited. We don't have one of these on the Gold Coast, and this was just walking distance from where we were and on our way to the train station, so it worked out perfectly. So tonight we're going to take you to Shake Shack in Rapongi and show you what it's all about. Alright guys, the food is finally here. The moment we have all been waiting for. We have a shack, Shake Shack double, which is the beef burger. We also have a chicken shack, which is their chicken fried chicken and pickle burger. We also got some regular fries, a chocolate shake and a root beer. Ooh, tastes like DP. Yum. And, and some chippies. That's like chocolate ice cream. That's delicious. That's dessert. I must say all of this it is on the expensive side for food in Japan. This, the grand total of this was 3,990 yen, so 4,000 yen, so about $40 Australian. So slightly on the expensive side, but hopefully it's worth it. Skin. So good. So oily, yet like fresh oily. So like buns are almost like a little brioche bun. They're not like your typical like McDonald's or anything. Really nice. I think it would be nice with like a little bit of smoky barbecue sauce. I think it's just got like mayonnaise or sriracha or something. It's good. All right, I'm gonna go in. Yum, that's really nice. It's that typical smash burger style, thin crispy patties, nice cheese. For me, the bacon is the standout. Mm. The bacon is like crispy, crispy. Ooh. Oh, you get first bite of this one. Oh, yum, pickles. Pickles, I think it's got like a tartar sauce on it. Big fried chicken patty, bit of lettuce on yum. the milk bun. <gasps> oh, that's a good face. Oh, that's the winner. The, the batter on the chicken, it has, it's like quite peppery. It's oh, okay. really nice. It's super crispy, but without being dry in the center. That's always a risk with chicken burgers. You never know. Mm, delicious. The pickles, 
are so good. They don't skimp on them. There's like a huge one here, and they're like decent size. Big thick boys. Probably could do with a tiny bit more sauce because that chicken fillet is so big, but it's so juicy. It's not oily. It's delicious. I'm gonna try one more bar. I couldn't decide which one's my favourite though. They're both so different, so flavoursome, so good. I'd have to get a beef and a chicken if I came here. And I'm gonna wash it down with this. Alright, we're gonna go finish this and then we'll check back in. Alright guys, that is a wrap on Shake Shack. So good. It was delicious. It was actually pretty good to be honest. Um, I think we were both, well, especially myself, a bit hungry at the start. So we got a bit of a bit excited, probably overhyped it a little bit. It's it's good, but it's nothing amazing. It's to, just like greasy fast food. Yeah. I, I compared it to like back in Australia we've got Betty's burgers. I said it's like that across maybe McDonald's. Yeah, it's the quality's alright, it's nice, it's like a fresh burger, which is nice. Um, expensive for food in Japan, which is you know a bit of a downside. Yeah, I'd probably actually say that the shake was the most standout item on the menu that we tried anyway. It was just, let's be honest, there's no nothing shaky about it. It was just chock, straight up chocolate ice cream. It wasn't too sweet though, which was nice. It was more on the savory chocolate side, which was really delicious. All in all, not bad though for the price. Um, pretty good experience there. So if you're around and you want to try Shake Shack, definitely give it a go. All right, guys, we are going to wrap up the video for today here. Pretty decent little food day. Had a delicious coffee this morning to start the day. Some nice little sweets from Boulange in Shinjuku. Then home for a little rest before coming out this afternoon to Rapongi and sussing out all the amazing Christmas lights that we saw tonight. Honestly, it's been a pretty good day. If you have made it this far, do us the pleasure of subscribing to the channel, like this video, and give it a comment. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.